getting ripped, shredded, jacked, in shape, will undeniably change your life. It definitely did for me. Hi. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Mazzy. I'm a male model, physiotherapist, and fitness enthusiast. In this video, I want to talk about how getting shredded changed my life. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Growing up, I was always quite sporty. I liked being active. I participated in sports, but I never specifically trained for anything. I never really took anything seriously. So I played tennis, I fenced, I played rugby in school, I played a bit of basketball, badminton, but none of these sports really sufficiently challenged me. It wasn't like a goal to get better at them. Those sports were just something I did and it, I got a sweat on, I burned some calories, but it was, it was never anything more than that. In Britain, we have sick form, which is where you're 17, 18 years old and you pick four subjects that you want to study and at this period in time, you're thinking about what uni you want to go to. So it can be quite stressful, it can be quite intense. Imagine being 17 or 18 years old where you're basically still a kid, you're still a child and everyone saying to you that you need to make these decisions in your life right now where it's going to determine the future. Like, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do in the future? You have to make these decisions now. It's just completely ridiculous. Because of that, I got quite stressed out and I felt like I needed to devote more time to study and music. So I actually stopped doing sport. I stopped exercising, which looking back was probably one of the worst decisions I've ever made because I started to put on a little bit of weight. I had quite an athletic build, but I didn't have that much muscle on me. So when I put on a bit of fat, I just became skinny fat. So I looked still okay in clothes, but when I took off my shirt, you could just see there was a few rolls here and there. Yeah, I was in the worst shape of my life. I was pretty depressed. I just didn't feel great most days. All I did was eat, sleep, study, and repeat. And there were a few occasions when I went to the gym and I had no idea what I was doing. So I did like a little bit of bicep curls and tricep extensions, and I might have done a couple pull-ups. But after watching a film called Never Back Down when I was 18 years old, and if you haven't seen the film Never Back Down, go and watch it. It's a masterpiece. It's like a remake of Karate Kid, but it's just a little bit better. I decided I wanted to learn MMA. I wanted to learn how to fight. So I started doing MMA after graduation, and I transitioned quite quickly to Muay Thai, which is the art of eight limbs. So the national sport in Thailand, what football is here, Muay Thai is in Thailand and it's essentially kickboxing, but you get to use your elbows and your knees as well. And this is how my fitness journey started nine years ago now. So how does this all fit in? How did fitness change my life? How did getting shredded change my life? The first way was that it gave me more energy on a day-to-day -day basis. Back when I was 17, 18, and in the worst shape of my life, I felt tired all the time. I felt sluggish. I woke up tired and then to make it worse, I found it hard to get to sleep. So I was a bit of an insomniac. I was a night owl back then as well. So I didn't go to bed at 10 or 11. I went to bed at 2 a.m. in the morning. So I definitely wasn't getting enough sleep and I was still waking up about seven. And then I get tired throughout the day and I normally need a nap in the afternoon. Training hard and getting a sweat going, lowering my body fat levels, getting fitter, improving my heart and my lung health. It just overall helped me feel less crap. It also encouraged me to eat more for performance, to fuel my body for my workouts. So I ended up eating healthier, eating cleaner. In fact, I almost went to the opposite end of the spectrum. I ended up eating so clean, I wouldn't touch any sort of refined carbs. I would eat brown pasta, brown rice, brown bread all the time. But actually this led to another issue, which was a bit of an eating disorder, which I might make a video on in the future, if you guys are interested. The second way is that I had more confidence. My mood was improved and I started to look better in the mirror. I'll never forget the first time I managed to see my top two abs. Obviously, I'm someone who has a six pack pretty much all year round. And if I get very, very lean, you can see the outline of the two bottom abs. So it's almost an eight pack, but it's mostly a six pack. When I was first losing body fat and getting into shape, I could see the first two abs pop out because everyone has six pack abs underneath. You just need to lower your body fat levels so that you can actually see them. I was proud of my body. I was proud of the fact that I was in shape. Because getting in shape is hard. Staying consistent is hard. Anything that's worthwhile in life is hard. To be in shape helped me develop a more positive relationship with my body and my image. 
I didn't hate the way that I looked in the mirror anymore. I actually liked the way that I looked. A couple years ago, I went to my best friend's wedding and I was dressed in a suit. And obviously I'd been working out for a good couple of years. So I stood up tall, I had put on a little bit of muscle mass and I was in pretty decent shape. Not as in good shape as I am now, but I was still in very good shape. When I was talking to my best friend's half brother, we had a little chat and we were talking about sport. And he basically said, yeah, I know that you're a sporty person. I know that you do the gym. And I was like, how can you tell? Because obviously I was wearing a suit. I'm not the biggest person. If I'm wearing clothes, I don't look really like I lift. But just from the way that I was walking, the way that I was carrying myself, he was like, I can tell that you work out because of the way that you carry yourself. The third way that getting shredded changed my life or improved my life, should I say, was improved physical performance. I'm stronger. I'm faster. I'm more athletic than I ever was before. I'm 28 years old now and I feel like I'm still getting stronger. I've still not achieved my physical potential. I'm peaking, but I'm still not at the peak. At the age of about 35, 40, that's when your bone mass peaks, that's when your muscle mass peaks, and then it's just like maintaining it for the rest of your life. Unless you hop on TRT or steroids, which I don't encourage, but TRT is something that people hop onto and then they can actually build more muscle in their 50s. I used to get knee pain. And because I started lifting weights, because I started squatting, I no longer had any knee pain. My body weight to power ratio improved. Of course, I didn't really train for bodybuilding, I trained for strength. So I was able to do weighted pull-ups, weighted chin-ups. I had improved strength doing day-to-day -day activities, DIY, carrying things. I remember one specific example, I think it was a few years ago now, probably either before or just after the first lockdown when we were allowed out again. I remember being at Baker Street Station, which is the London Underground. I saw this petite blonde Ukrainian lady struggling with a suitcase, which was nearly as big as her. And she was trying to drag it down the steps. And I was I was like, if you go down the steps right now, it's gonna topple and it's gonna pull you with it and you're gonna fall down and have an accident. So I, of course, went up to her and said, do you need help? And she said, yes, please. And so because I don't necessarily look that strong as I've talked about, and I was wearing a thick baggy hoodie and trackies because at that time I mostly like to dress for comfort instead of looking good. So I picked up her suitcase with one hand and I took it down the stairs for her. And then when I got to the bottom, she said thank you, but she was kind of like thank you, but in a shock kind of way because she didn't expect me to have to lift it up with one hand. One thing I've learned is that strong people don't put others down, they help lift others up. That's what you should do with your strength if you're strong. There was a really funny meme actually of Darth Vader lifting someone up by their throat. It's a Star Wars meme and it's, it's the exact quote I just said. Strong people don't put others down, they lift them up. And I found that really funny. Another way that getting shredded changes your life is increased attention. You do get more attention from other men because they're like, oh, you're in shape. How did you get in shape? They ask you questions. And that's that's an okay thing. That's okay to, to be sharing how you got into shape. And I love sharing how I got into shape, which is why I started my YouTube channel. But if you get into shape and if you're a relatively attractive man and you're in shape, then you do get attention from a lot of gay men as well. On Chinese Instagram, I think people think I'm gay and I can't read all the comments, but most I get obviously a lot of attention from women as well on Chinese Instagram and on Instagram on TikTok. Most of it is from women on TikTok, but for whatever reason on Chinese Instagram, it's, it's mostly men, so I get hundreds of DMs from men and most of them are gay and I just don't really know how to respond so I don't respond. That's one side effect of being in shape, being fit. You get more attention from women as well. So when I went on the online dating apps, on Instagram, on TikTok and things, on even on YouTube I get a lot of comments from women. So yeah that can be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm, I'm not really too fussed I and mean, it can be quite a nice thing to to validate your hard work, to know that you're fit, that you're in shape because someone's telling you that you are not that you're doing this for validation, you're doing this to improve yourself, but it can be just a testament to your hard work when someone says, oh, you're really fit. You know? So on that sense, I, I like to take positives from things. I like to see the silver linings and everything. So there are negatives. People might get jealous, especially other men. But the positives are that, you know, you get that confirmation that you've worked really hard and that you've got in shape. So that's a great thing. Getting shredded, getting fit, working out also slows your aging process. So I'm convinced that my aging has slowed considerably because I've been working out. I don't feel like I've aged that much since 21. I feel like I've aged more gracefully because at 21, I still kind of look like a kid, I suppose. There's been lots of research to show that Asians and Africans have a thicker dermis, which is why 
they actually age slower because they hold melanin in, protects them from sun damage, and protects them from getting or developing wrinkles. At age 28, I still don't have a single wrinkle on my forehead, and hopefully I can keep it that way for the next five, 10 years. But it's all about habits that you start early, in your early 20s, that will lead to long-term gains overall. So for example, in your early 20s, it's quite easy to get in shape, or at least it's easier to get in shape, because your metabolism is faster, and you, you burn things off quickly, and it's just easier to eat what you want, and still be able to train. When you start getting into your late 20s, you can no longer eat garbage like Domino's Pizza and Five Guys and still perform well in training and things. You have to be more mindful of what you eat. And I'm sure this is the case for those people in their 30s as well. When you're trying to get in shape, you can't eat whatever you want anymore. You have to eat a little bit more for performance. That's not to say you can't enjoy yourself and go out and eat at a restaurant. I try and eat healthy throughout the day. And then after I've trained, I'm a little bit more flexible in what I can eat. But most people will slack in their 20s and they'll just be naturally in shape because they train a little bit or minimally and they play sports. And then they'll sort of let themselves go a little bit and they'll be like, okay, well, I'll get back in shape when I'm 30. And by then it's it's so much harder as opposed to get into shape in your 20s and keep pushing for more and more and more. Because as David Goggins said, you're either going backwards or you're going forwards. So if you ask someone how they're getting on and they said they're pretty much the same, then they're going backwards. You can only really go forwards and if you're going forwards then you are improving and that's the whole point of life you want to be the best possible version of yourself put in the work now and it will be easier to stay in shape in your 30s in your 40s and even in your 50s and 60s and onwards look at arnold he's still in fantastic shape and he's 70 something also another thing you need to consider is that men tend to peak a bit later so look at henry cavill and Chris Hemsworth when they were 27 they didn't look like the men they are today. They looked obviously younger, more youthful, but when they sort of peaked in their mid to late thirties, and even now in their forties, they look pretty good. I think most women find them more attractive now than they did when they were in their twenties. So that's another advantage that men have. And the last way that getting shredded impacted or changed my life was that it helped to build mental fortitude. You, me or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life, but it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Because there's gonna be days when you get home and you've had a hard day at work or you've had just the worst day, things have gone wrong. Working out is the last thing that you want to do. You don't want anything more than to just curl up on the sofa, eat a bar of chocolate and watch a film. And it's not about motivation. You can be the most motivated person in the world and that moment that you open the door and see that it's raining, it's dark, it's cold or it's snowing, that's gonna make the most motivated person in the world turn around, sit back on the sofa and just not go outside. What you need is discipline and training when you don't feel like it is going to build discipline. It's gonna build mental fortitude. Most of the time when I work out, I don't enjoy the workout. It's uncomfortable, it's painful, right? But I chase that discomfort because I know it's gonna make me stronger I know what I do now, these little changes that I make now, the consistency that I have now, these little workouts that I do now, it's like slow, steady progress over a long period of time is gonna benefit me. It's not about the workouts that went badly, even if they go badly, just do it anyway, because it's the workouts that you don't miss that are gonna lead to the most gains. For the last nine years, I have not purposely missed a lifting workout. I've taken a week off lifting, but that's the longest I've taken off lifting. I'm so glad that I've focused so hard on my fitness journey. Like getting shredded, getting in shape, getting fit has changed my life for the better. A lot of people who are 28 tend to spiral down, a lot of men tend to just give up. If I keep everything up, I'm gonna age better than them. I'm already aging better than them. I mean, the fact that I was given a modeling contract at the age of 27, when people say that it's downhill from 27, it's make or break at 27. And I think that just shows that everything is paying off all that hard work that i do with my skincare with my workout routine with staying in shape it's it's all worth it i feel like i'm peaking now in terms of fitness strength my looks my career everything is like kind of falling into place at age 28. obviously there are pros and cons of getting shredded of getting in shape but as you can probably see it's mostly pros. I hope that you found this video useful. I hope that it inspired you. I hope that it was insightful. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm on my own, broken along. 
I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found